little story. Listen up. So this is how the story goes. And this story is from the Bible. If you've never read it, I mean, you guys hear me talk about it, obviously, all the time. But uh, the this, this story goes like this, guys. God, we'll call him Jesus. He makes man and woman, you and I, okay? And he makes us in his image. He makes us to be like him and to have a perfect relationship with him. The creator. If you think about it, if you look at anything that's um, man-made, the point of it is that it's been made, right? You look at this building, you look at my van, the cars, you look at the table, you look at the chair you're sitting on, someone created it with some sort of intelligence and an idea. Well, all the things that aren't man-made are also created and not just random. It's just way too impossible, like the um, the possible, the probability of things, how they, like how the world create uh, creation, nature, how it works. The probability of that to just happen on its own is just it's so high that it's impossible. Just if you look just at science, and if you look at how trees and animals and uh, eco, uh, eco the ecosystem and all that stuff, how it all works, it's just so perfect. It's crazy. You look at humans' DNA, our own DNA. It's like a book. Okay, it's like a, it's like the book of life. It's like the book of your of who you are. The DNA has all this information about who you are, and it's so tiny that you can't see with your naked eye. But you need like you know micros microscope and all that to see it. And if you look at a if you look at a book, I read books to my daughters you know at nighttime, right? This book, nobody threw a bunch of ink and wood like threw it on the, like, on the ground, and then it came out a book. It was created on purpose, with ink, with paper, but with purpose, okay? You and I, we were created with purpose. You're not just some form of cells or, like there's so much value to each one of your lives. You guys all have purpose and destiny, and you all have a calling, and God has a plan for all of your lives. And he created all of you, all of you, for relationship with him but what happened here's the thing he created us for relationship in order to have a relationship any relationship you have there uh, it requires love but what does love require love requires free will I can't force you guys to love me I can't force my wife to love me it's a choice right if I forced you to love me that's not true love if I forced and like if I threaten my wife you gotta love me She's like, okay, and she's like terrified all the time. That's not love. I'm forcing her. So God, he could have made us, he could have forced us to love him. We would be robots. Because we would have zero free will. But he gave us free will. Because free, you, uh, love requires free will. For you to choose love or not choose love. You either choose love or you choose to withhold love. Okay? What happened was, man and woman decide to do things their own way because they have free will so they chose not love they chose let's do things their own way unfortunately that's what this is sin that's what we call sin sin comes and pollutes them okay pollutes humanity it doesn't look that dirty but think of it as being really dirty like you gotta pour it all in. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So remember how it was? It was clear. Well, now this is humanity, separate, separated and broken from relationship, from perfection, from the source of love. The Bible says that God is love. In other words, if you don't, if there's no God, there is no love. There might be other forms of love, but they're more like if you love me, I'll love you, and that's all about me. It's selfish. If you love me, I'll love you. If you do this for me, I'll do this for you. That's self-centered. It's all about me and how I feel. God's love is selfless. So even if you all treat me like trash, but yet I still love you, yet I still show up, yet I still show kindness to you and buy you gifts and all this stuff, you guys would be like, why is he treating us so well even though we treat him so badly? Well, because it's called selfless love. And it's not because of me, it's because of what God did in my life. But that's besides the point. So this is what happened to us. We got stained. 
inside and out. So what happens is man has babies. Man and woman have babies and kids. And each kid comes out looking like this. Separated from God. At birth, separate from God. Zero connection with their creator. If I need to take my Pontiac Montana to get fixed, who, who do you guys think knows the best about it? Who knows most about Pontiac Montanas? Sure. Probably the creator, Mon let's say Pontiac, or obviously any, um, any mechanic. But uh, I have an SUV that's a bit newer. When that one has big issues, I gotta take it to uh, GM. I can't just take it to any mechanic. I gotta take it to GM. So I take it to its maker, okay? So the only one who can fix it, in a sense, is what I'm saying, is its maker. So the only one who can fix what we messed up is the maker, the one that's perfect. He, God, could have been like, you know what? I'm just gonna make a new race, and I'm just gonna wipe you out and start fresh. But because he's love and he's selfless, he chose love. And he chose to do something and fix this. He chose to fix this. And what he does is he sends, God becomes a man. His name's Jesus. Okay, I said Jesus from the beginning, but God becomes a man and his name's Jesus. God puts on flesh. He comes like you and I. He comes down, he doesn't come and live in a giant mansion with a nice car or a nice chariot. I guess they wouldn't would have cars, they'd have chariots back then. He didn't come as like the emperor of Rome. He came as a baby born in a manger. You've, you guys have probably heard the story, the Christmas story. He comes so humble. God of the universe who created everything, who could do anything, comes as a little tiny baby born outside, weathered probably like this. It's probably raining, it's, it's gross, it's yucky. There's animals everywhere. And he's born and he's, they put him in, a, in a, a manger full of hay, you know, whatever. And it's just crazy to me. And God grows up. Jesus grows up, lives a normal life, and he lives a perfect life, never sins. Why? Because, why wasn't he born like this? Because his father is God. So we inherit our parents' sinful nature, this brokenness, we inherit it at birth. His father is God, so he inherits perfection. But he's still yet a man, because he's born from a woman. And he, he comes around among humanity. Hey guys, how's it going? Love you so much. See you later. Oh, heal you heal you and he's hanging out with all these broken people so on Wednesday guys you guys may or may not know this a group of us we go out and love people downtown whether they're homeless or not homeless I've talked to people like business people I've talked to homeless people and I'm gonna just straight up tell you this okay two weeks ago we were talking to this guy and I was praying for him homeless guy right next to us this other guy was shooting up right in front of us literally this close did it bother me? It only bothered me that I, I wish he, I wish that his life wasn't to that point. It didn't bother me the fact that he was shooting up. I wish he wasn't shooting up, obviously, but I wasn't like scared or, because um, as a as a as a Christian, we and I'm representing Jesus on earth. I'm supposed to go into dark places. So think about that. It's during the daylight, right? He's got like a needle hanging out of his arm, and I'm there with some people praying for this one guy. Well, this guy's doing this thing. This guy right here, moments before that, I was praying for this other lady that was homeless and addicted. I was praying for her, we gave her a bunch of stuff, blessed her with some stuff. That she leaves, this guy over here that I'm, out to, that I'm praying for, he's like, he's like, man, I really need God's presence back in my life. I was like, oh my gosh. So I go over to him, I'm like, and I start talking to him. I'm like, bro, what's going on? He tells me he has a son that he loves so much. And his, love, his son's doing pretty good, but this guy, his dad, this dad's not doing good. He's homeless, he's addicted broken, mental health, every, the whole package that comes with that, right? That lifestyle. And we're just there, I'm almost crying, like we're almost all crying, we're just praying for this guy, and he's just, he's getting touched by the love of God. So this is what Jesus did, okay? He's hanging out with all these people, not, he's not hanging out with all the perfect people, not that there is any, but the ones that, you know, act like they're perfect, or that they know it all, or they're the best type of person, or, you know, like, too good for you type of person. He didn't, he, he actually, like, was... He was really harsh towards those people. Those were the religious people. They were like, Jesus is hanging out with dirty people. Oh my gosh, you know? So, are you kidding me? And so Jesus would walk around all the broken people, all the people that, just, you know, there's people that were like, um, they couldn't walk, they were um, 
They had all sorts of deformities. Leprosy was big. Leprosy like messes up your whole body, you know, and like your limbs fall off and just crazy stuff. It's the disease, skin disease. And they thought back then, I don't know if it's true, if, if you touched it, you would get it. Or at least you would become unclean to them. And then there was blind people, blind beggars, right? Just, just you know, a- asking for money. All these people. And Jesus would hang out with all of them. He would hang out with the people that were robbing people. The tax collectors and all these guys. He would go over to their house. He knew exactly what they were doing. He didn't approve of it. But he loved these people despite how they lived. That's what got me, guys. I wasn't raised Christian. I lived like hell for, like, most of my life. From, like, the age of, like, 12 to 23... I lived like hell. Like this is what I'm talking about, this brokenness. So Jesus comes into my life, or he comes into these people's lives, and he lives his perfect life. He dies on a cross because there had to be a price that was paid for our mess up. There had to be a price that was paid. There had to be a price, okay? Because we broke the, the relationship, so there had to be a price that was paid for that mess up. And there had to be a punishment that was paid. Jesus dies on the cross for humanity and takes our punishment and pays the price so that we could be free of this stain called sin. And he comes back to life like he said he would. He comes back to life, reveals himself to people, to all his followers, his disciples. They were discouraged because they thought they just lost their best thing. The best thing that's ever happened to them, they lost it. He died. He was was on the cross, hanging, dead. They take him down, bury him. Three days later, comes back to life. Destroys and overcomes hell, death, and the grave. Comes back to life. And those who believed in him received his spirit. And this is what his spirit did. And he wipes away sin from the face of the earth. And he fills humanity with himself. And he removes sin. This is what happened to me eight years ago. I was broken as broken can be. Jesus comes into my life and he sets me free from myself. I'm not perfect, but he sets me free from myself. He sets me free from all my addictions, all my brokenness. And he makes me brand new, clean, squeaky clean, inside inside and out. Not because I'm a good person, but because of what he did. All I did was say, Jesus, I believe in you. I receive what you did on the cross 2,000 years ago. I received it for myself because I believe. And this is what he did to my life. And he could do this for your life. I know there's some people here that he did this to their lives already. But this could be you. Don't wait till you're 23 like I had to wait. Where you have to where you're making really dumb mistakes and they just get bigger and bigger and bigger to the point of 23, when at 23, I, I overdose. Guys, what if I didn't survive? If I didn't survive when I was 23, I would not be in a good place. I would be in hell. It's real. But it wasn't created for humanity. It wasn't made for us. So Jesus makes a way so that we don't have to go there but we could go to heaven. But not only that, heaven comes into you and you get to live heaven on earth. That's the craziest part. You can ask some of the people here that when we go out Wednesdays, last Wednesday, we talked to this homeless addicted woman. She's, well, she's not that old. Maybe let's say in her 20s, mid 20s. We saw, we, we felt like God highlighter. We go up to her, I give her a Starbucks card. She was in Starbucks, I'm like, hey, I just wanna give this to you. A five bucks Starbucks card. She's like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, do you know why? She's like, why? Because God loves you. She's like, oh my gosh, really? I'm like, yeah. And then uh, I'm like, see that lady out there? We're just outside, we're just out here blessing people and loving people. She's like, oh my gosh, can I come talk to you guys? So we, we go, we leave Starbucks, we start talking. She tells us she has Crohn's disease, which is pain in the stomach area and causes pain everywhere and a really bad back. Seven out of 10 pain in her back. The lady I was with is my pastor's wife. I said, Carol, put your hand on her shoulder, because she let us, obviously. And I said, say this, be healed in Jesus' name. Carol prays, and this girl gets fully healed. All the pain in her body, I'm not a doctor, so I can't diagnose her. So the way I know this is I said, before we prayed, how's your pain? Seven out of 10, pain everywhere. We prayed, how's your pain now? I have zero pain, nowhere in her body. That's called the miraculous. 
God is a God of miracles. So not only like he makes me clean, but now he actually uses us to bring heaven to earth. And what does that look like? People getting healed of diseases, of, of mental, emotional, and physical diseases and pains. And he, and he, he restores us. It's crazy. Anyways, that's long enough. I hope you guys got something from that. Thank you for listening. You guys are great. You guys are